So here we have a 1900s text, uh, and in this case it's a text from the 1930s, and it's by George Orwell, and it's called Down and Out in Paris and London, in which he spends time um, living as a beggar in order to understand what it must be like uh, to be them, and he's describing our attitudes towards beggars, okay, in this in this text. Um, I think it's a really good example, uh, partly because it comes from a, a real past exam from OCR, and partly because um, it's very, very useful for understanding the changes to society in the 1930s, okay? Um, and the key thing that you need to do here is explore how this text is different to one that, that comes either earlier or later and why um, that might be and, and, and why we might see that. The, um, the key focus here is, is Orwell is trying to increase our levels of sympathy and increase our understanding for, for what it's like to, to be these beggars. And, and we'd get that in the 1930s because we're, we're in a time in the, in the Great Depression where uh, people do have a lot more sympathy because suddenly people have got a lot less themselves. So that focus on social justice is is increasing um, and that real despondency of the, of, the, of the system and the fact that it's not really working for people. So that's a key thing contextually, I think, that you'd be focusing on here. Um, so. In terms of thinking about it, you'd, you'd have a section probably on orthography and discourse structure. Well, orthography, you can't say a fat lot because the, the spellings are, 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 are as they are today. You know, there's there's not changes there. The way that the words are written, there's no long S's or, um, you know, archaic, archaic letters. Um, we, we're not going to get that. So instead, I think you'd focus on the, the discourse structure and notice the simplicity to it. Notice the very short paragraphs. Um, notice the way that the sentences start, it is worth, it is taken, yet, and he, seldom, okay? We have a real simplicity of style, lots of simple and, and compound sentences, lots of sentences that start with the subject, okay? The, the he, he seldom extracts more. So we get in this idea of, of, ed, of uh, education being more widespread and text being quite democratic. Partly that's because of what this is about, but partly it's because the readership of the text now, we can't assume it's just a certain type of person. This is a text for a, a widespread um, population. So notice it all well starts, you know, it is worth. He starts by justifying why he is talking about that and context. I think that is very, very useful. Then it is taken for granted. He challenges uh, society's ideas. Notice the simplicity, it is worth, it is taken, of style and, and the discourse structure that he uses. Notice the non-standard opening of that sentence and as a social type, opening... Um, with the uh, conjunction, the coordinating conjunction and, okay, previously that would be seen as, as non-standard, we won't get an and part way through a sentence. Here Orwell does it because as part of his discourse structure he's following, showing a, a, a general continuation of thought. Um, we get the simplicity, he is honest, and we also get uh, later on, he seldom extracts more. So we get the simplicity of style there also with opening with the subject, he's honest compared with the sellers, he seldom extracts more than a bare living. So this real simplicity of style, this avoidance of um, what, you know, what, what would be seen as, as, as unnecessary uh, subordinate clauses and, and um and you know sort of um, needless additional phrases that you see in the 17 or 1800 text a real simplicity also of the syntax here um, he seldom extracts um, we get there as well um, in terms of um, the, the the Lexis here okay um, we have got you know French Latin so society um, from, from, from French but notice also um, Orwell focusing on that high concept this is a text that's written for a very wide readership it's relatively easy to read um, and yet he's focused on a big big idea of how our society works of course he is because in the 1930s that was the frustration for so many people who were driven to, to, to the extremes Notice the participle there. He talks about the distinction between beggars and ordinary working men. So that participle, because working is normally a verb, but here it's used as an adjective, the working men. Okay, so that participle drawing that distinction, which Orwell goes on to say is false. And at a time, of course, when many people were out of work, many people would be very aware of, of, of how false that distinction um, is. He talks about criminals, he talks about prostitutes. I noticed those um, plural nouns there of what are seen as the undesirables. And all, all, all well focusing on this group and showing how actually um, we we are perhaps you know having a false distinction between us 
and them. He uses the metaphor, they are parasites, not because Orwell believes that, but to describe how they are seen. So in terms of Lexis, we're getting metaphorical language, we're getting the use of nouns, we're getting the use of participles that you could comment on. He uses the um, in, uh, inverted commas here, a critic earns his, this idea that, um, you know, a literary critic, and that's a sphere in which Orwell is kind of, you know, work, work, you know work, work, working as a writer, earns that verb uh, in inverted commas, suggesting basically that, um, I guess, what he's seen as the higher class, the high society, are no more worthy. They're not really earning a living. So again, that verb and, and, and the use of inverted commas, Dickens, um, not Dickens, sorry, Orwell is, is, is challenging um, that idea. Notice also the Latin vocabulary, excrescence. Occasionally, we do get um, this more Latin um, vocabulary built in. Um, I would also, though, um, argue, okay, um, that excrescence, it, it, it comes from the you know the word excrete or excretion or excrement. Okay, he's talking here about poo basically that the the, the the beggars are, are seen in that way. So yes, it's a low frequency, a high register word. Yes, it comes from Latin, but there's an element of irony here that where Orwell does do it, it's dis to describe again quite a taboo um, topic. He uses that plural pronoun. We live in a humane age. Again, he uses it ironically to other problems uh, with society. He talks about a navvy, a word not used so much today. It's a slight archaism, but to describe a soldier. So we do get these occasional more specific words. We also get the accountant. You can see, um, you know, those sorts of middle class jobs that wouldn't have existed perhaps 100 or 200 years ago. And Orwell is trying to break, basically break down those distinctions between literary critics, navvies, accountants, beggars, to describe the fact that we're all the same. Quite a socialist uh, perspective here. He does use some medical terminology, varicose veins, chronic bronchitis, so that medical, I wouldn't say quite jargon because it's quite widely understood, but that idea um, that these, these medical terms are fairly widely understood here. And notice again, they are um, conditions experienced by those living in poverty. Um, he talks again, he comes back to the idea of, of a parasite, but a fairly harmless uh, parasite. He talks about our ethical ideas. I think that adjective ethical is really important. It comes from Greek. So we're getting some Greek, some French, some Latin here. But Orwell is doing so to break down the distinction between high and low culture. He's writing to everyone to describe the fact that basically we're not as different as we may have thought. In terms of grammar, what do we get here? Well, we get a fairly simple style, but I wanted to go into some of the uh, particular grammatical um, terms that we could look at. So we get that adverbial clause early on for when one has consorted with them. Or, well, making the point that if you know them, you might feel differently. So, yes, it's an adverbial clause, but it's not particularly hard one to understand. It's a, it's a fairly short adverbial clause, and it's all well making that point that, that essentially there's there's not that much of a, of a difference between us. One cannot help being struck by. So that verb um, struggle or being struck, he puts those two um, together. This sense of, of, of instant realisation at a time when suddenly people were far more poor than they used to be. We can see that. We get the noun phrase ordinary human beings. Orwell draws that false distinction that we draw between who's ordinary human beings and who's a parasite. We get people seem to feel. Okay. Notice, so rather than saying people feel, Orwell hedges it. They seem to feel. He uses the infinitive to feel as kind of the, the, the secondary verb. It almost work, works like a like an adverb to describe how they seem to him. Notice Orwell um, drawing out quite gently the prejudices that we have. Um, we get this idea of working men, that participle, working men work because do not work, so that, that false dichotomy that we draw. We get the conditional clause later on, yet if one looks closely, very much like when one has consorted with them. So those subordinate clauses aren't done as they would be in the 1700s to show reason. They are to do with Orwell very quickly adding in the fact that as he has first-hand experience, he feels differently to the general uh, viewpoint. He uses the interrogative, beggars do not work, it is said. So we get the passive voice, it is said, they don't work again. Um, he uses the passive voice to show that the generally widespread view, but then the interrogative, what is work? Orwell is seeking to challenge the way that we think about society here, and we get it through all those things. So the context is feeding in to the discourse structure, to the lexis, to the grammar. 
He uses noun phrases later on, the Sunday newspaper proprietor. So we're seeing again, newer job roles, but also all well drawing that difference between the Sunday newspaper proprietor and the higher purchase tout and the beggar. So that was noun phrase, he's describing the supposedly respectable jobs compared to the beggar. But they also through the noun phrases um, show the, the, the new roles. The Sunday newspaper straight away shows um, the the information age, doesn't it? You know, the, the um, growing readership of, of, of the news, the higher purchase tout, that compound word higher purchase. So uh, if you were higher, higher purchase something, you might higher purchase your radio or your TV. You'd, you'd rent it until you paid enough to own it, okay? Like a traveling salesman who'd sell these higher purchase. So we're getting the um, growing consumerism at the time, but I guess also the poverty, people can't afford these things outright, so they're kind of going into debt or having them um, buy higher. So that higher purchase tout, I guess again, shows the, um, the, the, the challenges to society at the time, but through the grammar, through the compound uh, word, through the uh, noun phrase. So across all of those, um, what we get um, from Orwell is this real desire to show that, that society you know, has been profoundly unfair, to write in a relatively simple style that can be understood uh, by all, um, and to really challenge the misunderstandings and the misconceptions that society has. I think it's a really good example of 1900s context, but a really good one for language. You might look at this at first and think there's, there's nothing I could say because you haven't got the long guess or the really obvious you know um prepositional phrases or extra clauses that you could talk about um but actually within this if you just look at what words are there what do you notice how's he expressing his view there are things you can say about lexis about grammar and about discourse structure